Thank you for joining me in this week's episode of Jason Stewart Photography. This week, I want to talk to you about one of the most widely used and important compositional methods that every photographer must not only know about, but they must use if they want to consistently take beautiful images. And that is the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is a compositional method in which your photograph is divided into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. And the subject of your image is placed at the intersection of one of those dividing lines or along one of the lines itself. When this is done correctly, it helps you capture an image in such a way that is very pleasing upon your viewer's eyes. And if you begin approaching your photography with the rule of thirds in mind, you will not only notice a big improvement in the images that you're capturing, but you will also notice a big improvement in your overall photography. In photography, the rule of thirds can be applied to images of people, pets, wildlife, nature photography, landscape photography, just about any subject that you choose to photograph, you can apply the rule of thirds to. What I love about the rule of thirds is that it is one of the easiest compositional methods to not only learn, but to also use. And like I've already mentioned, in order to begin using the rule of thirds, you simply break your photograph into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. Let me show you what I mean by looking at some photographs that I've taken so that you can see how I've applied the rule of thirds to them. When it comes to photographing people, the rule of thirds makes a tremendous difference in the overall quality of your image. In this image of my son Jeremiah, you can see that the rule of thirds has not been applied. And though I still love this image of my son, from a technical perspective, this image is missing something. Let's see what happens when we apply the rule of thirds to this image. As you can see, the image has dramatically improved and the distractions in this photograph behind my son have been removed as well. We now see a correctly composed image using the rule of thirds of a young boy who is smiling. This image will capture the viewer's eyes. Here's an image of my sweet wife, Lindsay, at the flower fields in Carlsbad, California. This image is straight on and in my opinion is very acceptable, but that's simply because I think my wife is the prettiest girl in the world. However, let's look at this same image when the rule of thirds is applied. Compositionally, this image looks much nicer with the rule of thirds. And once again, we see that when we have a correctly composed image by using the rule of thirds, it is very inviting to the viewer's eyes. Here's another image of my wife at the flower fields. You can see that it is very important that this image has a rule of thirds applied. Otherwise, it looks a bit unnatural to me. When we apply the rule of thirds though, this image has a much better feel and balance to it. And there is some visual space in front of her. Here is one more image of my son. And because of the beautiful color combination of blue, white, and yellow, this picture doesn't look too bad. However, when we apply the rule of thirds, we can see there is a massive improvement simply because of the compositional arrangement using the rule of thirds. I hope you can see how using the rule of thirds can greatly, oh wait, I'm in the center. Let me start that over again. That's better, isn't it? Much more easier on your eyes now. Okay, I'm making a joke, but it really is important that you grasp what I'm trying to teach you right now about the rule of thirds because it will improve your photography greatly as well as the images that you capture. But I hope that I have shown you uh, the importance of using the rule of thirds, especially when you're photographing people. It just makes a, a dramatic improvement on the feel of the image when you when you use a compositional method of the rule of thirds. But let's see how the rule of thirds look in other areas of photography, like how about taking pictures of your pets? In this image, I captured a photograph of my friend's dog. Now, if you are doing pet photography, in addition to getting down to eye level with the pet, the rule of thirds is very important to remember as well. As you can see, when the rule of thirds is applied, the image is just more visually appealing. Here's another image that I took of a black Phoebe songbird that the rule of thirds has been applied to. 
There is a wonderful balance to this image and the blurred blue background makes a perfect backdrop to this image. What I want to look at next is how I apply the rule of thirds to my wildlife photography. So let's take a look. Looking at this image, I captured this pronghorn antelope in the Grand Teton National Park. And as you can see, when I captured the image straight on, it, well, I mean, it's nice that you can see the pronghorn antelope, but to be honest with you, I'm bored with this image. I, I don't wanna keep looking at it. It just doesn't look visually appealing to me. However, when I apply the rule of thirds to this image, you can see that this image immediately becomes more appealing. Here's an image of a coyote that I captured at Yellowstone National Park. The first image of this coyote is dead center. And to be honest with you, I kind of like it dead center, but let's look at what happens to this image when we apply the rule of thirds to it. As you can see, there is a tremendous improvement to the overall composition. Let's look at another image of a white horse. This just looks like a plain white horse to me and there's nothing that really draws my eyes to it. It's just blah to me. But when we apply the rule of thirds, look at what happens to the composition. As you can see, there is a dramatic improvement to this image when the rule of thirds is applied. Here's another image that I took in the Grand Teton National Park of a herd of elk. Now, this time, the rule of thirds is a little different. It's not to the right or left of the image, but I'm using the bottom third of the photograph to apply the rule of thirds to. As you can see, the elk are at the bottom third of the image, and it's visually appealing. Not only is our attention on the subject, which is the elk herd, but there is also a lot of room for our eyes to investigate more of this image in the upper two thirds, in the trees, in the forest, Let's look at some landscape images now and see how I apply the rule of thirds when I'm doing landscape photography. In this image here, which I've titled Sunset Over the Inland Empire, you can see that I've used the rule of thirds by putting the lake in the bottom third of the image. In this next image of a sunset I captured in Del Mar, you can see that I applied the rule of thirds not only to the sun, but also to where the ocean meets the horizon line. When doing landscape photography, it's important to use a rule of thirds, especially for your horizon. In this next image, as you see, it's a red barn. And when the red barn is just placed in the middle of the image, it's just, well, it's a nice red barn, but I don't want to study this image. I don't want to look at this picture anymore. I want to go on to the next one. However, when we apply the rule of thirds to this image and we place the barn on the left side of the image at the one-third mark as well as we place the horizon line at the bottom third we have an entirely different feel to this image and my eyes want to look everywhere I'm totally captivated with the beautiful barn I'm captivated with the storm clouds above with the Sun dropping beneath the clouds and even the beautiful colors in the sunset this image just came alive by applying the rule of thirds to it. Looking at this next image that I captured at Yellowstone National Park, you can see that I applied the rule of thirds. I have the photographer placed on the right side of the image at the one third mark. I also have the horizon line placed at the lower third. By placing the photographer on the right side of the image at the one third mark, as well as placing the horizon on the lower third mark, this image is very appealing to the eyes and it makes us want to study all of the little details and nuances. In this next image of a green shack that I took while traveling through Ashland, Oregon, you can see that I have the green shack placed in the lower right one third of the image and I have the horizon line on the upper one third of the image and this creates a beautiful balance and is very pleasing to look at. In this next image that I like to call the sunset surfer, you can see that I have the surfer on the lower left third of the image along with the horizon line on the lower third. And because of this, we have a very appealing image to look at. It's very easy on the eyes. Now you might be wondering, 
Are there times when we don't use the rule of thirds? And the answer to that is yes, and that's what I want to look at right now. The next method we are going to look at is a compositional method known as filling the frame. What filling the frame enables you to do is to get extremely close to your subject and to capture your subject in a different way than we might normally see them. And in my opinion, it can be quite a powerful image created when you do it this way. In fact, let me show you a few images that I have captured by filling the frame. The first image here is of a grizzly bear that I captured in Montana. And I've titled this image, Can We Be Friends? Now, because I was able to get this grizzly bear so close up, you can see the details in his nose. You can actually see that there's moisture on his nose. You can see the beautiful eyes and his ears and his fur on his face. And by getting extremely close up, we're able to see this grizzly bear in a much different light than if we were to have it zoomed out. In this next image, I filled the frame of my friend's cat by getting an extreme close up on his face. And by doing this, we're able to see the detail in his nose and his whiskers. And my favorite part are on his beautiful eyes. Looking at this next image, you can see that I filled the frame with an elk from Yellowstone. And by filling the frame, we're able to see details on his nose and nostril and his eyes. And you can even see the velvet on his antlers uh, in much more detail because I filled the frame. And the last image I want to show you is, is simply uh, a close-up that I did of a squirrel. And because I filled the frame with this squirrel's face, we were able to see this squirrel in a different light than we might normally see. We can see again the detail in his nose and on his fur and on his whiskers and his beautiful eyes. And so we see that rules are meant to be broken. We're not always going to use the rule of thirds as we've just looked at. There's many compositional methods that we've been learning about and that we're gonna continue learning about. And as you begin getting a better grasp of these compositional methods, you are going to notice a huge improvement in your photography and a dramatic improvement on the images that you're capturing. Today we've been looking at the importance of using the rule of thirds, but at the end, again, we looked at the importance also of filling the frame. Both compositional methods are important and you should be using both of them. And so as I bring this week's episode to a close, I hope I've been able to show you the importance of using the rule of thirds with your composition. In simple terms, don't put your subject in the middle of your picture unless you want to be known as a snapshot photographer. And you'll never be taken serious as a photographer if you do so. Because as you begin learning and using the different compositional methods that I've been talking about in this teaching series, you're going to begin noticing uh, the different methods that you see in photographs that you are viewing. And you're going to notice right away if somebody's using the rule of thirds or if they're using leading lines or if they're filling the frame, you're just gonna start developing the eye of a photographer. But the big idea that I want you to take away this week is that each time you look through your viewfinder, I want you to be thinking about the rule of thirds because the rule of thirds will dramatically change the quality of the images you take and it will greatly improve you as a photographer. Thank you again for watching this episode. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in the comment section below and I will answer them as soon as possible. Also, if you found this episode helpful, can you do me a big favor and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button? This lets YouTube know that you like this content and you want to see more of it. And it really helps me by getting my channel out to a broader audience. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great week. Now go out there and capture the world. 